I am alive. I am awake. I am alert. I am called. I'm the recipient of the greatest gift. I'm a contender. I am strong. I am courageous. I'm tired. I'm conflicted. I am afraid. I am pressed on every side, but I'm not crushed. I am perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I am persecuted, but I'm not abandoned. I am struck down, but I'm not destroyed. I am thankful. I am renewed. I am looking forward. I am learning to say no to fear and doubt and shame and apathy and distraction and vanity and compromise because I have said yes to grace. I am not going back. I am strong in the Lord's mighty power. I am more than a conqueror because I am loved. I'm fighting to win. I'm fighting the good fight of faith. And faith is worth fighting for. Hey, welcome to Church at Home today. It is the cabin edition. It's Labor Day weekend, maybe you're camping, maybe you're at a cabin, maybe you're out of town, maybe you're just having a great staycation with your family, but we thought if you're gonna be away, why don't we all be away together and do church in this format? I'm excited about it. I was telling our church last week that, that Labor Day is one of those Sundays often that, that pastors don't really love coming to church on, and uh, they, they look at the group of people who did show up, and then they make some crazy statement like, where is everyone today? which is a crazy thing to say to people who are there. Anyway, we're not going to do that this year, and I never want to do that in a year. So let's have some fun today. Let's worship. I got a message I'm going to share in our brand new series. It's going to be a great day. I'm going to turn it right now over to Lewis, and we're going to worship Jesus together. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me And you have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath He breathed your life into me And you have been so, so kind to me Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me now, fights till I'm found and leaves the 99. You know I couldn't earn you, and I don't deserve you. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never Breathless love of God When I was your foe Still your love fought for me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. And you have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, breathless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found in the east of 99. I know I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love. 
love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't get down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't get down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't get down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't get down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found and leaves the 99. You know I could learn it, I don't deserve it, but still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, Reckless love of God Take me back to the garden Take me back to the moment I heard your voice Take me back to communion Lead me back to the moment I saw your face And it was all so simple You're so easy to love No space between us It was easy to trust You are closer, closer than my skin And you are in the air I'm breathing in And here's where the dead things, they come back to living I feel my heart beating again Feels so good to know you are Here in the place I'm fully known This is communion Here in the place You hold me close And it was all so simple So easy to love space between us so easy to trust and you are closer closer than my skin and you are in the air I'm breathing in here's where the dead things come back to living I feel my heart beating again Feel so good to know you are my friend And this is where I'm meant to be Me and you and you and me 
I don't have to prove a thing You've already approved of me This is where I'm meant to be Me and you and you and me I don't have to prove a thing You've already approved of me Closer, closer than my skin And you are in the air I'm breathing in Here's where the dead things come back to living I feel my heart beating again It feels so good to know you are my friend Jesus, what a gift, what a promise that you're our friends. What a promise that we don't have to present to you some sort of false perfection, some sort of a, a facade. Instead, we can approach you because you're approachable. What a work you've done by your grace. Today, as we press in, we're worshiping, we're looking to your word. I ask, Lord, that we would have this sense of vulnerability before you, understanding how truly authentic you are and how truly approachable you are. And even right now, I wanna believe with you, if you have a need that, that only Jesus can work in, a miracle that you really do rely on God for, can we present those to God right now? Do you know you don't need to be in a beautiful stained glass window church? You don't need to be in, in any place other than the exact place you are right now to approach God with your needs. And so I wanna believe with you right now, Jesus, I'm praying for people who are sick in their body. Maybe they have a diagnosis that doesn't look very good. It's, it's kind of bleak. I'm praying right now for families who have tension and feel broken and busted up and are, are looking for an answer on how to get back on the same page, praying for marriages that right now have been so fractured during this season and, and we're believing for miraculous restoration. God, I'm praying right now for people who are discouraged, who feel defeated, who feel beaten down. I pray that you would be the lifter of our heads, that you would be the one who breathes new life into our circumstance. I thank you that you are the resurrection and the life. And so even for dead dreams that seem too far gone, for impossible things that seem like, like there's just no way that could happen, we believe for those things today in faith, knowing how approachable you are. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way by your grace. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today at Vivid Church. I think this is officially a first to be standing at the lake and spending some time preparing our hearts and, and, and turning to the Word of God. I, I hope you're enjoying your time throughout this season of Church at Online. I want to remind you, if you have not yet uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, if you could just do that right now. It's crazy how much it helps with getting the message out to people, not only of content that's coming, but equipping and facilitating evangelism, giving you what you need so you can share something with a friend. I think in this season more than ever, we've got this really accessible low bar of evangelism where there's content being produced that we can share with our friends. But you know, more than just content, church is community. It's people in relationship. It's people intentionally making space to be in one another's lives and to allow the, the commonality amongst us and even the friction amongst us that, that like the Bible says, iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. There's nothing like community. And so I want to encourage you, even though we're distant and uh, we're in different places and we're watching on screens, please do everything you can to be intentionally involved relationally. We have hubs that meet online, some hubs that meet in person as well in socially distant spaces, mostly outdoors. And, uh, but we have, we have hubs meeting every Thursday online. And it's really truly the greatest way to just open a little bit of your time every week and say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in someone's life. We often think of hubs as something that we need. And it's true, community is something we need. But you know, there's someone else in a hub who needs a person just like you in their life. A person with your gift mix, a person with your ability to bring encouragement. They need you in their life. And so why don't you take some time, get involved in a hub. It's about one hour every week. You can join in from wherever you are. We wanna encourage you to do that. 
and to be intentional. And then the last thing I was thinking today is, is the church is not a community unto itself. We're part of a community, part of a greater community in the city of Vancouver, New West, in the neighborhood of Kitsilano, and now in other pockets in, in Kelowna and Victoria and England and different places where people are gathering together. So I want to encourage you, church is not just uh, the community that you draw from, but be invested in the community that you're in. Pray for the city that you're in. Be a, a servant in the city that you're in. Serve the people in your bubble. You say there's only six people in my bubble and three of them are my family. Well, serve those people. And may this season of, of more limited social life be one of the most rich, fruitful season when you're invested into the lives other people around you. Is that good? Can we do that together? I think it would be such a game changer for each one of us as here we are in September. Before I dive into the word today and we begin this series called Worth Fighting For, I want to give you an opportunity to give as we do every week when we gather, give you an opportunity to be invested in the house of God. Jesus is building his church, even in a way that maybe we didn't have a blueprint for, Jesus did. In a way that maybe we wouldn't sit in a, a planning room and say, you know what the greatest thing for the church would be if everyone stayed in their homes and opened up their computer screens and did church community on phones, and we wouldn't have planned that. But Jesus has a plan, and he is executing his plan, and he is working his plan even through this trial, even through this struggle. And I want to just give you that opportunity to be invested in what Jesus is building. You can give online at any time, but we always take just a moment when we gather to pray specifically around finance because it's one of those things that really occupies so very much of our thoughts. And it's one of those things that Jesus says, when you open your hand and you trust me, just watch as I will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour blessing into your life. I don't know about you, I want to live under that type of blessing. Why don't we pray together? Jesus, thank you for every household represented here. Thank you for every person. And I pray for each of us. God, nudge us. Move us forward, inspire us, push us to be people who are, are not just uh, faith-filled, but are also faithful, that we don't just have spikes and moments where we feel faith, but we faithfully care and commit to the thing that you care about. And I pray today as we give that the little bit we all contribute would actually be multiplied in such a way that, that we wouldn't even be able to imagine or ask for what you could do. Today, God, would you position us as a church to be a greater blessing in our cities. Position us as a church to be more and more responsive to the needs of the world around us. And as we uh, are positioned as people of generosity, that our church could continue to be open-handed and generous. We ask for this in your name. And man, if I could hear you from the lake, I want to hear you say amen. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I can't hear you, but I see you in the chat. So today, why don't we get real engaged in that chat? If you're watching live on YouTube right now, it's where all the action's happening. Maybe you're watching in a house party. It's okay to talk in church. Just don't distract the person beside you. Inspire them. Why don't we, why don't we turn to the Word now? I'm, I've been really excited for this series for a while now. And as we've looked towards this September season, the fall, the autumn, the beginning of a new season, I've been so excited to talk around this topic of, of fighting. It's kind of an interesting topic to, to speak on. But you know what? I think in this time of being quarantined, some in isolation, some recovering right now from COVID-19, some uh, doing everything they can to responsibly keep a distance and, and do what we can to limit the, the, the spread of this disease. I think what it's done for so many of us is kind of lull us into a new state of lazy. Do you feel that? Like, like the, the bar of activity has been dropped, and yet it feels like it's more work to get anything done. Like, like simply running out to grab a couple of items has now become more work. And it's like there's this fight that is always taking place just to do the simple things we always did, and yet there's an overarching sense of kind of laziness, maybe a little bit of apathy, perhaps a little bit of a, a lack of purpose or a lack of destination. And, and so we're simply existing. My heart for our church, my dream for our church, and what I feel God's speaking to me as the pastor of this church is, is that it's time for us to shift from defense to offense. It's time for us to, to shift our mentality, not just toward how are we going to keep things together on a personal level? How am I going to manage to make it through this time? On a, on a family level, how are we going to do finances in this time? On a church level, how are we going to organize people in this time so make sure nobody falls between the cracks? But it's time that we shift 
towards being a little more offensive. It's time that we shift and say, as an individual, I am going to grow in this season. As a family, we are going to strengthen our bonds in this season. As a church, we are going to activate our faith. We are going to be mobilized in this season. You say, well, well, how can I be mobilized when I'm asked to stay at home? I think that's a great question. And I hope today and over the next number of weeks, we can address that question with some biblical specifics. Does that sound good to you? Amazing. Why don't, why don't we dive into this today? If you have your Bible, turn to the book of 1 Timothy. While you go there, by the way, could you just join me? Can we thank Lewis over here sitting on the dock? It's hotter out here than it might look like on screen. And here he is worshiping. And then can we just thank our whole team? There's some people on the other side of the camera who are burning hot to make this happen. It's just a special thing to work together as a team and to do everything we can to, uh, to get the message of the gospel forward. Check this out. 1 Timothy chapter 6. When you get there in your Bible, you can join me. Until then, I'm going to begin to read verse 11 of 1 Timothy chapter 6. This is Paul speaking to Timothy, and he says this, But you, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Hold on to the eternal life, which you were called to when you made your good confession in the presence of of many witnesses in the sight of God who gives life to everything and of Christ Jesus who will uh, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession I charge you to keep this command without spot without blame until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ which God will bring about in his own time God the blessed one the only ruler the king of kings and the lord of lords who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. This is like near the conclusion of Paul's letter to Timothy. He goes on and it's like he writes a little PS at the end. He goes, one more thought while I'm at it. But this is the culmination of what he's been writing about to Timothy. Now, I think this is so significant for, for many reasons. Here's one of them. I think you and I, we're all, no matter what stage of life you're in, we're all Timothys. We're all people who have a position in faith like Timothy. There are people who are pouring into us. That's what Paul did. But we're also people of influence. Now, I know someone you're watching this saying, I don't influence anyone. You really do. You have a greater influence than you could possibly imagine. Do you know people are always watching you? There, there's somebody who's just kind of got you in their peripheral vision, and they're watching the way you live, and they are, are gauging their own actions, their own faith, their own kindness, their own integrity, Based on you, you might not even know it, but you're a person of influence. When Paul's speaking to Timothy in, in another part of his letter, he says this, Timothy, I just want to challenge you. Don't let people look down on you because you're young. Instead, live like an example. What is he saying this? Is, is we need to have a higher view of ourselves and understand that God has positioned you to be influential. And so like Timothy today, we're being poured into by the word of God so that we can be an influence to the people around us. And what does he say to Timothy specifically? He said, Timothy, you are a man of God and I want to challenge you to flee from this. And the, this he's talking about is pride and it, it is greed. Now, if you were to look back, you always want to look at the Bible in its context. He's just talked about what it's like to chase after things and, and hoard with a mentality of greed. He's just talked about what it is to be full of our own opinion, full of our own uh, thoughts and our own ideas as if we're the end goal and we're the answer. He says, Timothy, I need you. If you're going to actually fight this good fight of faith, I need you to flee from those things. Run away from greed. I, I want to challenge you, run away from greed. And you might notice it, it sneaking up in your life. Run from it. Flee from it. Don't let greed have a hold on you. And don't let pride get the best of you. You know, the funny thing is this. I feel like in, in our world, maybe the two things people say it's worth fighting for are pride and greed. I mean, maybe those are the, the two greatest things that people are willing to sacrifice for, to lay themselves out on the line for, to work long days and hard nights and, and do without and, 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 and put themselves in a position of suffering so that they can climb to a higher level of status where there's this pride element, or they can amass more wealth where there's an, a greed element. And Paul says, Timothy, flee from those things. And he says, not only flee, but fight. Isn't that interesting? Because when we talk about adrenaline, we say you've got 
a choice to make. You either, f it's either fight or flight. But here Paul says, I want you to do both. I want you to flee from something so that you can fight for something else. He, he, he says, don't even fight greed. Don't even fight pride. Just get away from it. Get out of the environment where pride rules in your life. Just remove yourself from the environment where greed is dominating your thoughts and your ideas because you have a bigger fight to fight for. There's something more significant in faith than just not doing what is wrong. And it's actually pursuing what is right. And then look, look at the list of things he says to pursue. He says, Timothy, I want you to pursue righteousness. That's making the right choices at the right times. Pursue godliness. That's to be like God. Pursue faith. That's a life that's not lived by sight, but, but according to every word we hear that comes from God. To pursue love, oh my goodness, to make the decision to put others first and to allow that to be the motivation for our action. To pursue endurance and to pursue gentleness. Now for me, the gentleness one really stands out. He's going like, like pursue godliness and you're kind of like, oh, I got this. I'm going to be more like God. Pursue faith. Ooh, I can do this faith thing. I can believe for more. He goes, also pursue gentleness. I'm not looking for you to be like, like a, a, a maverick without a cause. I'm not looking for you to, to be a spiritual gladiator who, who looks at the world around you and says, are you not satisfied how righteous I am, how godly I am? Look at all my faith, but also pursue gentleness in your approach to people. And under that banner of pursuit, he goes, Here, here's what that cause looks like. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Today, I've purposely created this juxtaposition in a beautiful, peaceful place talking about fighting. Now, now we could have maybe found like a dojo somewhere or, or a little boxing gym and be like, here's what it's like, guys. It's game time. The bell is rung. It's your fight. But the, the reality is the fight of faith is every day. The fight of, de of, of faith for us is when we wake up in the morning and it's when we go to bed at night. The fight of faith is in our homes. It's when we least expect it. It's around the people that we care about and love. It's even in our resting, we are fighting the good fight of faith because faith, this thing that's worth fighting for, it is about having a godly perspective and it's about being gentle. It's about enduring, but it's also about loving. It's this holistic lifestyle that God is calling us to. I suppose in realizing that, it just became far simpler and far more complex. If I only had to fight like once every four months when I make weight and I know who my opponent is and I, I get up on the scale and, and, and we have one of those pictures where we stare each other down and this is the big fight, the fight night and we're, we got 12 rounds and it's going to go this. Like I suppose some of us in our faith have thought the fight of faith is like that. It's game time. It's Sunday, whatever that means. It's Easter, whatever that means. Like, like there's certain moments now we've got to be really faith-filled but then other moments you don't have to have faith. Faith is living a life of faithfulness. It's gentleness and godliness when no one's watching. It's righteousness when you don't win a prize for it. It's love when hate would be easier. That is the fight of faith. And I'm telling you, that's a fight worth fighting for. Faith is truly worth fighting for. He says, Timothy, I want you to take hold now of this gift that God gave you. And it's crazy, the word take hold is super violent. It's like to seize something, to tackle it to the ground and to hold it in submission. He's like, God has given you a gift, it's eternal life, but you have to fight for it. You gotta grab that thing. You've gotta hold on to that. You gotta continue to walk in perseverance and endurance and in boldness. Continue to do the things that you did in the beginning. Now, I feel relieved that we're, we're talking about this for a whole month because I could sidetrack on so many different tangents. But today I want to just address this simple thing. Why don't we fight more? Like when it comes to faith, why, why are we so hesitant to fight? Why is it that our, our life of faith might just look like a perpetual vacation at times? Why is it that this thing that Paul would describe as a, a fight like a contest or an endurance match? Why is it that for so many of us, it's an afterthought? It's that thing that how did the, the year 2020 slip us by? 
How is it that I'm now making goals for the same thing I made goals for last year? Have I not grown? Have I not matured? Why is it that we can be so passive on this thing that Paul calls a fight? I think there's a few reasons. One is simply we tend to be passive people. And perhaps the gospel has been presented in a passive way. Perhaps you've received the gospel or the the message of Jesus' grace and you've misunderstood how uh, wide of a spectrum it is. You've heard this spot. Jesus loves you this, you know, for the Bible tells you so. And then you thought, great, I guess that's it then. Like Jesus, he did the work and I guess, I guess that's just it. And the crazy thing is it's the answer is like, yes, but like, like, yeah, that's true, but in order to receive everything that God has for us, the rewards that he has, it's a fight. In fact, Paul puts it this way. He says that, that we're in, we have received an inheritance from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But until we mature, we actually don't get the benefits of the inheritance. It's like we are underaged heirs. And so we're still treated like children, never getting the full benefit of what a life of boldness might look like. Oh, what, a, what a life of giftedness and knowing how called we are, never getting the benefits of that because we're never really willfully maturing. It's, it's like we just become so passive. And I think it's probably bad theology that gets us there. We're like, well, it shouldn't be hard. If God's, if God's on my side, everything should be easy. I mean, find that in here. Look to Jesus, who is our example, and find a picture where Jesus just, oh, I'll just live passively and like, Let God the Father do what God the Father wants to do. No, no. In John 6, Jesus says this, my food is not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. He goes this, like, I can't even imagine living. I can't imagine just taking from this life. It's actually my goal, my one ambition to do the will of the one who sent me. And interestingly, in that same passage, why don't we turn over there to John chapter 6, in that very same interaction, Jesus says this uh, to his disciples, John 6 and verse, uh, look at 28. The the, the question from the disciples is, is asked this way. What must we do to do the works that God requires? The disciples, they're walking with Jesus. They're like, I know you're talking about grace and grace. I get it. Like it's a, it's an incredible gift, but you're also really busy, super productive, always sacrificial. And so if we're going to live like you, I think we have to do something different. What is the specific work that you've outlined for us? What's my job? Have you ever gone to a job and not known your job description? Here they're saying, can you just give me a job description so I know if I'm winning? And Jesus describes it this way. He says, the work of God is this, believe in the one he has sent. How crazy is that? He's just said, faith is work. Faith is effort. Faith is endurance. It takes perseverance. It takes some grit and some sweat, and yet we can tend to be so passive. I think one of the the other reasons that we don't tend to fight is we we try to live polished Christian lives. It's not like we want to be passive. It's not like we've misunderstood this. We get that it's work, but we just want to be polished. Probably we've been conditioned that way by some of the people we've spent time with, that when we don't do our best, people kind of pull back. When we don't perform in a certain way, we tend to get less affirmation, less love, less opportunity, less less invites. Maybe you say, man, I feel like I've been excluded from, from a group. I guess it's my behavior. If only I can present myself more polished, perhaps I will will get more status. I'll get more affection. I'll get more love. I'll get more affirmation. And so we can tend to live these fake plastic Christian lives. Well, yeah, we believe in Jesus, but we would never want to admit that we're struggling in any sort of way. We believe that, that, yeah, endurance is an important thing, but even when I'm enduring, even when I'm persevering, I better not let any sweat show. I better not let it be, be seen to anyone that this is hard work. And so people say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm great. It's easy. Good. It's God. Oh yeah. God's on my side. We're good. All good. No problems. No problems here. Instead of being a little more vulnerable that this fight is taking everything out of me. As a pastor of this church, I just want you to know, this has been a really challenging, hard season. It's been a fight. 
And I, I don't want to present in any sort of way like this is easy doing church online. We love it. Like this is, this is difficult. Being separated is difficult. Trying to, to care and, and, and guide and lead and, and, and disciple in this season has been so difficult. And not just organizationally, but as a person, it's been difficult not to go to that dark place of will life ever go back to normal? It's been difficult to, to sit with my kids and say, hey, school year, guys. And, and then them say, but there's no sports and, and we're in different classes and I don't know what it's going to feel like. It's been a fight. I don't want to present any sort of fake polish that everything's easy in Christian land. This is, this is a fight, but it's a fight worth fighting. Faith is so worth the fight because the life of faith is an adventure. The life of faith is full of blessing. The life of faith is one where you step across the line of what you could do without God, so you really do need God. I love the life of faith. I wouldn't trade it for anything, but it's a fight. I think the third reason that we, we don't fight is because we feel unprepared. There's someone here, you're watching this, you're like, I get that, that like, to be godly, righteous, enduring, loving, and gentle, that list is too big for me. I don't think I'm, I'm ready for this. In fact, if, if, if someone says one more thing to me, I'm going to lose my love. If, if I get one more difficult situation thrown my way, gentleness has gone out the window. Endurance, I gave up on that sometime mid-April. I'm just trying to survive. We feel ill-prepared for, for the hard work that it is to fight this fight of faith. But let me show you this. I hope it might just change your perspective just a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, if you could go there in your Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh, Paul is writing, he says this, so if you think you're standing firm, and I, I hope that's all of us, I hope we all feel like, though this has been a challenge, though this is hard, I'm at least standing. I might not be going forward as much as I'd, I'd like to be. I not, might not be advancing. Maybe I'm not growing, but at least I'm standing. And he says, if you feel like you're standing, by the way, if you don't feel like you're standing, don't try to fake it and be polished. We love you where you're sitting. We love you where you're lying down. We love you where you feel beaten down on the side of the road. Let us know. We want to come pick you up because the righteous person might fall down seven times, but they get up eight. It's okay if you don't feel like you're standing. But if you do, if you do right now say, I'm standing, but I'm not really advancing because I just want you to be careful because it's in those seasons that you can tend to fall. But then he says this hope-filled statement, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to all mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he'll also provide a way out so that you can endure it. I mean, there's so much hope in that verse. First of all, it's just this pride killer. You think that you have a specific reason why faith is too hard for you? No, you're not facing anything that everyone doesn't face. We all have to deal with our thought life. We all have to deal with our stresses. We all have to deal with disappointment. We all have to deal with temptation. It's a little bit of a, a stress killer to take us away from feeling like somehow our unique situation is so different that we have an excuse why we would, we would sin and fall short. But then he says this, God will never let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. This literally means that, that, that when you feel tempted, and trust me, if you're anything like me, it's a daily thing. That temptation is an affirmation from God Almighty, who is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's immortal and lives in an unapproachable light. That God, he's going like, you got this. You got this. My son, you got this. Daughter, you got this. I know you got this. You have the strength within you because it's my strength that I share with you. Ask me, you got this. And then even if you don't feel like you got it, God still says this. I'm going to give you a way out. Not so you can run and hide, but you can stand strong under it. Maybe today you say, I don't think my faith posture has been one of fighting because I've just been too passive. I've thought it should be easy. And whenever things get hard, I just, I just crumble. Whenever things get hard, I say, it's no, no worries. But here Paul is saying to Timothy, fight for faith. It's a, it's, a, it's a fight worth fighting for. Yes, it's hard work in every moment of the day to, to live with integrity, hard work. To be encouraging, hard work, depending on who you're trying to encourage. To, to live with, with any sort of other focus, man, it's a challenge. Maybe if you've been too, too passive, it's just time for you to understand that, that that work, as long as you're working according to what God has called you to do, is actually what faith looks like. Faith looks like 
work, how it worked. Maybe today it's because it's you're trying to be too polished. And if I've played a part in that or any of our leaders, I'm really sorry. I would never want you to feel like you have to be perfect to fit here. We're all in this fight together. It's like God has enlisted us in a battle and we, we lose some battles, but we will win this war. We're gonna take hold of everything that God has for us. Or maybe today you feel unprepared. What I get out of that passage in, in uh, 1 Corinthians is that even when you feel unprepared, that's part of the journey. And so right now you're being tempted by things that will feel little in the future. And you got this. And God is, he, he's, he's watching and he's going, you can do this. You can win this one. And if you feel like you can't, and if, if you get, if it gets too hard, I'm going to send some people to help you stand under it. If you can't, I'm going to send you a word to encourage you. If you can't, get some worship music in your life. Get, get some devotion in your life. Get some community in your life. You are going to be able to stand up under this. This will not take you down. And in that way, you stand firm, not in pride, not on your own achievement, not on your own effort. You stand firm on the solid foundation of the enduring grace of God. Before we conclude today, I just want to point out this. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Some here you say, Pastor, I, I am fighting. Every day is a fight. Every day is a battle. And it might just be that, that what you're fighting is not a good fight. You're fighting to win. Uh, argument with someone and to win you have to become a loser and go low and low blow and try to take them out or you know discredit them that's not a good fight for some you've, you've reduced this this fight on the inside of you to things like yeah you know I'm lactose but I'm gonna have some ice cream it's worth it and you're like you're fighting against like these little things and it's like this is your battle to fight for some you're, you're fighting to get a high score uh, on, a, on a video game and you're like, yeah, it's what gets me up in the morning. Just, you gotta redirect that fight that's within you for this good fight of faith. Because there's so much reward in store. And he says this, Timothy, I want you just to take hold of that, like the thing that began when you made a good confession. What's that good confession? It was Timothy making a, a stance where he stepped over the line of faith and said, I can't do this on my own. I'm not perfect. I'm sinned, I'm sinful, I'm flawed, I need God's grace. He said, when you made that confession, you immediately inherited eternal life. Now, let's go fight for it. You immediately inherited all the blessings God has for you. Now, let's go fight for them and seize those things and hold on to them. It's gonna be a good fight of faith. In order to do it, you gotta flee from some things. And I wanna invite you today, maybe you've not yet made that confession. Interestingly, he says, and you know who else made a confession of their faith in God? Jesus. He's, he's basically saying, Timothy, live like Jesus. It's gonna be a fight. It's gonna take everything out of you, but when you pour everything out, God fills you up till you overflow. Right here, right now, wherever you are, I wanna lead you in a prayer. If you've never made a confession to put your faith in Jesus, this can be your moment. And eternal life with God begins right now. Pray, pray a prayer just like this. Join your faith with me if this is you. And if you would, even let us know in the chat. Say, I'm praying this prayer right now. We wanna encourage you. Simply this, Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you love me and that you have called me according to your purpose. Today, I receive your grace and I turn from my own way of living. I give you my life. Thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer today, you're saved and you have now begun this journey. You are called to be a fighter and God's gonna put some faith on the inside of you to endure. Over these next number of weeks, we're gonna talk what it looks like to fight on a practical level, to fight this fight of faith. But let me pray for you before we sing a song to conclude our service today. Jesus, for every person who's watching today, I pray that on the inside of us, some new fire would, would, would come, some new passion, some new boldness to really pursue all that you have for us. Righteousness, godliness, endurance, love, even gentleness that we'd find ourselves in this season fighting for those things, putting effort and putting energy forward. So we flee from greed, we flee from pride, and we wanna pursue all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all so much. I'm excited we get to share some time in Hub together later this week. But for now, why don't we get back up on our feet, even if you would. Maybe you're at the cabin, you're at the lake, you're, you're camping, you're on your couch. Why don't you get up on your feet and let's sing this last song before we go today. Once I was broken, but you love my whole heart through. Sin has no hold on me, cause your grace holds me now. You didn't forgive him. Look where my chains are now. That there's no hold on me, cause your grace holds that ground. And your grace holds me. Now. 
Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a great Sunday.